A Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Maureen O'Sullivan in Sky Nursemaid. The heat wave through which most of the country is sweltering makes this an appropriate time to mention Freon Refrigerant, a product of DuPont Research. Freon is probably at work right now in your mechanical refrigerator safeguarding your food. It is extensively used to air-condition shops, restaurants, theaters, and public buildings. Even more important, it is at work in the war. For example, in Navy submarines, it provides the fresh, clean, cool air that enables gallant sailors to wage relentless war on our enemies. Tonight on Cavalcade, we tell the story of a service, an Army Air Force service, so new that it has no history except the history that it's making now, day by day. It is the story of the Air Evacuation Service, which speeds the wounded from the field of battle to hospitals behind the lines. Our radio play, Sky Nursemaid, was written for Cavalcade by Sue Taylor White, and in the role of Nurse Jean Owens is starred Maureen O'Sullivan. We are in a canteen on a flying field in Algiers, somewhere near Oran. Flight number 18. Flight number 18. Uh-uh. Outside, a plane is being loaded with war materials for the battlefront. Soon it will return with a cargo of torn and shattered bodies. Inside, pilots and crews and nurses await their flight orders. Flight number 18. Flight number 18. Taking off in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Crew, report to Hangar 6 immediately. Crew to Hangar 6 immediately. Hey, that's you, isn't it, Freddy? That's me, Irene. Just when I get a cup of hot coffee for a change. Here, Edna, it's all yours, including two sugars. Oh, thanks, Freddy. Oh, and don't forget, you're taking me to the movie Saturday. Okay, babe. So long, girls. Bye. Bye, Bill. <laughs> Be seeing you. Good luck. Keep your nose up, Freddy. <laughs> Cute, isn't he? I like him. <laughs> Did you say like him or work him? <laughs> say, Irene, look who just made a personal appearance. Where? Well, over by the door, Sergeant Stevens. Oh, I wonder if anybody ever saw that guy smile. Ixnay, Ixnay, here comes Jean. Oh, don't oh. mind me. So Sergeant Stevens isn't the Pollyanna. Oh, so dear. what? Oh, hello, Jean. Uh, sit down. Oh, thank Jean, you. Jean, doesn't Sergeant Stevens ever like anything? Yes, just doesn't like his job, that's all. Well, he's in the Army, isn't he? Listen, Irene, he's medical staff sergeant on my plane. He's a good one. And good ones are hard to find. Say, what's he got on you? Don't be silly. He's just the best staff sergeant I ever had, and I don't want to lose him. (laughs) I think she's carrying a torch for him. That's what I think. Maybe there's some hidden glamour in his past. Must be in his past, all right. Oh, there are probably lots of things you don't know about Sergeant Stevens. Go on, tell us, Jeannie. Yes, we're listening. Both ears. Oh, rubbish. If a man doesn't fuss all over you, you think he's cold or dumb or something. Well, if you want me to tell you, Lou Stevens isn't dumb. And as my guess, he's got much more feeling than most of those flying Romeos. <laughs> oh, Edna, isn't she amusing? Well, I like him, and I don't care who knows it. And if that amuses you, well, you can go right on being amused. Excuse me, Bill, I've got to check over my plane supplies. Sure, Jean. Gee, she's sure got it bad. Can you picture that? For Sour Puss Stevens. All right, all right. But if he comes over here, why don't you girls just talk about the weather? Meaning we're to keep our trap shut, hmm? Well, that's a rather crude way of putting it, but you seem to have the idea. Hmm. Hey, uh, Stevens, grab a cup of coffee and come on over. Okay. Yes, Stevie boy, come on over and spread a little sunshine. I said stow it, didn't I? All right, Harvard, all right. You listen to his troubles. Me, I'm, uh, I'm going to go over and give us on that gin rummy game. You coming, Edna? Coming. Bye-bye, honey. Hey, wait for me, Irene. Hiya, Lieutenant. Hiya, Stevens. Sit down. How's tricks? Lousy as usual, sir. Listen, Lou. Why don't you stop beefing all the time about the air evacuation service? It's losing you friends. Not for long. Hey, what did you do? Apply for a transfer? Yeah, active duty. Now look, sky nursemaid, that's what I am, a sky nursemaid. I'm sick of it. Getting out of this lousy service. It's your job, Lou, an important one. You call that a job? Taking orders from a woman? Bring me some water, Sergeant. Easy with a stretcher, Sergeant. 
Run and get a bandage, Sergeant. Yes, miss. No, miss. Right away, miss. That isn't what I joined the Army for. If you mean Jean Owen, she's the best nurse in the air service. Well, it's easy for you to talk. You don't have to take orders from her. Listen, when we're in the air, I take her advice and you know it. That gal's got perfect judgment on what height to fly our wounded. When she gives orders, I take them. It's no use, sir. I made up my mind. Flight well, number 19. Flight number 19, taking off in 15 minutes. That's Crew us, Lou. report to Hangar 7 immediately. Let's Crew go. report to Hangar 7 immediately. Yeah, I know. Boss lady is waiting. Yes? Do you mind if I call you Lou? <laughs> I mean, when we're way out to the front and there are no superior officers around. If you want to. Good. My name's Jean. Here, sit down, Lou. Have a piece of chocolate? No, thank you, miss. Meaning you won't sit down or you won't have any chocolate? Meaning a sergeant is not supposed to sit in the presence of a superior officer, miss. Oh, Ross, superior officer. What's the matter with you, anyhow? What makes you such a sore head? Well, you won't have to put up with me much longer. I'm getting a transfer. I'm sorry, Lou. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. Well, you're wrong. I'm really sorry. You're the best staff sergeant I ever had. Well, I'm not sorry. I enlisted in this lousy service for just two reasons. No, I guess for just one reason. You mean your kid brother, Jimmy? How did you know? Oh, some of the boys told me. Well, some of the boys talk too much. And when you enlisted, you never thought you'd be taking orders from a woman or be a sky nursemaid, did you? What else do you know? Oh, plenty. Um, you ran a service station in Madison, Wisconsin taking care of Jimmy ever since he was born. Studying to be a doctor, wasn't he? Yeah. That's all he ever wanted to be, the moment he could talk. He must be a wonderful kid, Jimmy. Yeah, Grave of the crop, that kid. I remember once when he was still in the bridges. Yes, Lou? Go on, I'd like to hear. Oh, uh, nothing. Is Jimmy much younger than you? Oh, yeah, ten years. Jimmy's not dumb like me. That kid's smart. Ever since he was ten, I kept telling him, Jimmy, you got brains. You're going to get an education, Jimmy. The best that money can buy. And he got it, too. No, why not? High school, Wisconsin U, medical school. Nothing too good for Jimmy. And then he enlisted. Yeah. Two more years to go. Kind of broke my heart at first, but then they put him in the medical corps, and I felt a lot better. Oh, oh that's the reason you enlisted. Yeah, yeah. I thought maybe that... Maybe you'd be near him. Maybe. I thought, well, I might pick up things in the medical corps. Uh -huh. So when the war's over and Jimmy comes back, I'd know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, where's Jimmy now? I don't know. You worried about him? Well, I haven't heard from him since they started that push for Tunis. That's why you want to transfer, isn't well, it? Well, I figured if I got a gun in my hands, maybe... You might be stationed near enough to keep an eye on him. Uh, I'd be asking too much, Jean. I mean, miss. <laughs> I wish you meant Jean. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. It don't come sort of natural. You a lieutenant, me a non-com. <laughs> well, lots of good things don't come naturally, Lou. Sometimes you've got to work for them. You're pretty smart yourself, aren't you? Okay, crew. Stand by for a landing. Coming oh. in now. Oh, I wouldn't say that. But anyway, I'm glad you think so. Uh, Lou, think about not being transferred, will you? I am. I mean, I, I will. Oh, that's good. Honestly, I'd hate to lose you, Lou. You know, you're Yeah, the best... I know, I know. The best staff sergeant you ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Lou! Look at those ambulances lined up on the edge of the field. Roads off them. We've got some work to do. Hello, Major. What's the matter with you? Uh, look, Jeannie, I can't go along with you today. They're coming in too fast. Uh, think you can handle it without me? I don't like to make this trip without a flight surgeon, Major. You never know what's going to happen. I know, I know, but doctors can't be spared. Casualty's too heavy. I wouldn't trust everybody, but you're different, Jeannie. You've got a head on you. Uh, uh, load up now. Okay. All right, boys, bring the stretchers. Now be sure you check each patient's tag first. No, 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 not there. Fill the higher and the lower tiers with the least critical boys. And the worst ones who need attention during the flight go in the middle tier. 
No, don't put the fractures in the tail of the plane. They can't stand the whip wind. Have you got enough cotton pads to put on the fractured jeep? Oh, plenty. Sergeant Stevens. Yes, miss. Take over the camping of the stretches, Sergeant. You know, try sliding them in the way I showed you. Oh, yes, miss. Uh, right no, away. Jeannie, no, uh... well, What's the matter, Major? Uh, you'll have to call him back, Jeannie. Send him over to the tent to direct the ambulance and check tags. Call him back? Oh, but, Major, he's my best loader. Orders, Jeannie. Call him back. Uh, yes, sir. Sergeant Stevens. Yes, miss. I don't want you to load, Sergeant. Report to headquarters. You'll direct ambulances there and check patients' tags. You don't want me to load? Oh, I get it. Sergeant, do as you're told. Yes, miss. Oh, but Major. Major, why? He's my best loader. He's been trying to transfer, and I've been trying to keep him. I'd like to know why. Easy, Jeannie, easy. I'm sorry, Major. You know about his kid brother, Jimmy? Yes, the one he sent to medical school. You're taking him back. Oh, no. Bad, Major? 50-50 chance. I'd hold him for the next flight if I could, but he won't last it. Oh, poor Lou. Lou? I mean, Sergeant Stevens. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry, Major, but I... I understand, you. Oh, he's so grand, Major. All that touchy crust on the outside, but underneath, you he's know, he's crazy just... about that kid brother of his, isn't he? Oh, yes, Jimmy's just what he wanted to be, don't you see? Educated, a well, doctor. That's why I sent him away, Jeannie. How'd it happen? Well, Jimmy went out on a first aid party. The Germans got their range and raked them with machine gun bullets. Oh. Jimmy got it in the abdomen. Lost much blood? Too much. Transfusions, Major? Three. We may have to give him another. Well, I've done it before. Good. I'll load him last. Uh, try not to let Stevens know. You'll have a tough enough flight anyhow. I'll try. And, uh, Jeannie, one thing more. Yes, Major? Watch your altitude. Be sure that Bill flies under 14,000. You know what altitude does to these abdominal cases. Yes, sir. I'll see that he keeps down. Well, good luck, Jeannie. See you next flight out. Hope I can go back with you then. I hope so, Major. Goodbye. Get yourself some sleep. Where do you want this one, miss? Is he the last? No, miss. There's one more to come. Hmm, let's see. Who's on this stretcher? I'm Private Jenkins, miss. Compound fracture of the leg. How are you feeling, Jenkins? Lots better after seeing you, miss. <laughs> well, you'll recover, Jenkins. Now, look. If I put you right here in the middle where you'll get lots of attention, will you do something for me? Just ask me, miss. Just ask me. All right. Now, opposite you, I'm going to put a boy who's very sick. Will you keep an eye on him for me, Jenkins? Anything you say, miss. All right. Now, if he begins to breathe hard or anything like that, no matter what I'm doing, call me, will you? Just rest easy, miss. You can count on Jenkins. Okay. I'll let you load, miss. Three walking wounded waiting outside, if you can take them. Last stretcher coming in. Thanks, Sergeant. Uh, you take on the three ambulatory cases. Put them far forward and make them comfortable. Uh, I'll load the last stretcher myself. Let me give you a hand with that one. Sergeant, I said take the ambulatories forward and make them comfortable. Yes, miss. All right, you three guys up forward and make yourselves comfortable. You heard what the lieutenant said, didn't you? Easy on that stretcher, boys. Easy. I'll fix the clamp. All right. That's all. Stretcher bearers off the plane. All off, please. And give the signal for the takeoff. Come on, miss. are listening to The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont and starring Maureen O'Sullivan in Sky Nursemaid, the story of the flying ambulance service between the front line and base hospital. <laughs> Nurse Jean Owens, played by Miss O'Sullivan, is trying to prevent Lou Stevens, her staff sergeant, from learning that on their plane, critically wounded, lies the sergeant's kid brother. Excuse me, miss. Private Lester says he's going to be sick. Who's Private Lester? One of the walking cases up forward, miss. Well, what's wrong with him? Broken arm, set in traction. Never been up in a plane before. He's kind of scared, I guess. Well, you ought to know what to do with him, Sergeant. Yeah, sure, sure. Prop him up so his arm doesn't jostle. Well, give, give him a him... paper bag. He'll get over it. Anything else, Sergeant? Well, don't you want to give me your list so I can check him over? Never mind, Sergeant. I'll do it this time. Some of them may need treatment. Please, Sergeant. Will you stay forward with those ambulatories? They don't need any help, and you know it. When I want you, I'll call you. Just because I've been transferring out. Now you won't let me do anything, huh? Coming out here, I thought you were on the level. My mistake, miss. Will you stop acting like a fool and get forward? Yes, miss. Indeed, miss. Right away, miss. I'll go forward and play nursemaid, holding a paper bag for Private Lester to be sick in. What's eating him? Oh, never mind, Jenkins. You've got other things to worry about. Boy, oh boy, is he carrying a torch. Now, don't forget you're keeping an eye on that kid across the aisle, huh? Yeah, well, he's dead to the world. He ain't flipped a muscle yet. Oh. Now what's eating you? Oh. 
Honest, I didn't mean to holler, miss, but that bump, it was like somebody dropping a trip hammer on my leg. Well, when we're flying low like this, we're apt to run into air pockets. Look, if I lift your leg, do you think you can slip one of these cotton pads well, right here? It'll hurt a minute, but it'll make it easier on the bump. Uh, well, why don't you call the sergeant, miss? He'll help you. Oh, what's the matter, Jenny? You afraid of a little pain? Okay. I'll slip it under. Uh, where's the pad? Here. Now. <clears throat> Quick. Under more. Mm. Under. There you are. Feels better, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. Say, you're pretty good, ain't you? Uh, sure. So are you. Hey, miss, the kid across the aisle's coming, too. Thanks, Jenkins. Ooh. Hello, oh. Jimmy. You feeling better now? Is, is this a hospital? Sort of. It's an air evacuation plane. We're flying you to a hospital. How do you know my name? Well, it's on your tag. Jimmy Stevens. Tag? Oh, you've got my tag. Think I'm gonna die, don't you? Oh, of course not. Whoever put that idea in your head? Bullet wound in the abdomen. I know what that means. That's not... Jimmy. That's so good. Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes? Take it easy, will you? We're going to have you all right in no time. Two hours and we'll be at a hospital. Just hang on, Jimmy. Please, for my sake. Just hang on tight. I feel... Dizzy. Nurse. Nurse, I'm, I'm so cold. Jenkins, quick. Throw me a blanket. He's gone into shock. Well, I ain't got a blanket, miss. Hey, Sergeant, come back here. The uh, nurse wants you. Hurry up. Oh, Jenkins, who What's told you? What's the table, Bonnie? Yes, miss. You want me? All right, Sergeant. I do need help. Blankets and hot pads right away. There's a boy in here in shock. We've got to give him a blood transfusion. I'll get the plasma, miss. Got a sterile needle? No. Lou. Lou, wait a minute. Yes, miss? I don't know how to tell you. What is it, miss? You better take a look at him first. It's Jimmy. I didn't want you to know it, Lou. I tried to keep it from you. I... Say something, will you, kid? It's me, Lou. Oh, you're wasting time now. This has got to be fast, I tell you. Don't stand there. He's shot. He's lost a lot of blood. He's shot in the abdomen. Do you hear me? Yes, miss. I hear you. I'll be right back. Oh, hurry, Lou. Hurry. What are you doing to the plane, Bill? You're jarring all my patients. It can't be helped, Jean. There's a Messerschmitt on our tail. He's shooting at us. A Messerschmitt? Well, can't you lose him, Bill? He's gaining on us. I may have to climb, Jeannie. Oh, no. No, you mustn't do that. I've got an abdominal case on board. He's in shock. Altitude may kill him. All right, I'll try, Jeannie. But if I can't shake him, I'll have to go up. Here's the blankets of the pad, miss. Any better? Did you get the plasma, Sergeant? Yes. Still water, sterile needle? Everything's ready, miss. All right, Sergeant. Mix the plasma. Be sure to shake it. Stand by till I need you. What's that? Jimmy, does this heat make you feel any better? Jimmy? No use, Jean. We'll have to go up. Our only chance is to lose him in the clouds. Jeannie, what do you say? Shall I go up? What's he mean, go up? He can't do that. He may have to, Lou. We're being chased by a message. It'll kill him. It'll kill Jimmy. Well, we don't. It'll kill the others, all the other 17. You don't want that, Lou. What do I care about the others? Tell him to stay down where he belongs. You're a soldier, Stevens. You're a sergeant in the medical corps. It's your business to care about the oh, others. don't give me that. Medical corps, the best nursemaid in the air evacuation force. All I'm thinking about is Jimmy. All right, Sergeant Stevens. You'll get your transfer and good riddance. Sergeant Stevens. Oh, go on. Answer him. This is Sergeant Stevens. What's happened to Janie? She's... She's right here, sir. Well, tell her I'm waiting for an answer. Tell her we've got to go up. What does she say? All right, Sergeant Stevens. You answer him. Says to go on up, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. I don't like the way he's breathing, miss. Too shallow. Let me feel his pulse. Maybe that... Blood transfusion. Yeah, I think you're right, Sergeant. Plasma solution ready? Ready, miss. Tube, please. Needle. All right, you can start it flowing now. Slowly. Slowly. Sergeant, you're not going... No, to... I've got it, miss. Go right ahead. Pulse is stronger now. Yeah. The color's coming back in his face, huh? Maybe we're pulling through, Sergeant. Well, he's got the best nurse in the service, miss. And the best staff sergeant she ever had. Flight 
Flight number 18. Flight number 18. Taking off in 15 minutes. Crew report to Hangar 6 immediately. Crew to Hangar 6 immediately. Hey, Lo. Lo, here she is. Oh, Bill. Hi, Lieutenant. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the name's Jean. Lieutenant Owens, may I introduce you to Staff Sergeant Lou Stevens? Bill, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> oh, no, you're not, because I'm leaving. I uh, have a few things to check over on the plane. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, Sergeant. The devil. <laughs> I brought some coffee for you, miss. Hot. Mm, and a bar of chocolate, too. Yeah. Well, I'll have to think about that chocolate, Sergeant. <laughs> I just came from the hospital, miss. He's doing fine, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Doctor says he's going to be okay, as good as new. Oh, I'm glad, Sergeant. Lou, miss. Lou what? Lou Jean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Colonel over there oh, ever heard nuts, us? nuts to the Colonel. <laughs> Say, Jean. Yes? I've been sort of thinking. What about Lou? Me and you, I mean... Well, yes? you see, I guess I acted awful dumb on that flight, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You make good sense to me. Yeah, but all them fireworks. You know, I got a rotten temper. Have you? Yeah. Well, if you promise to keep a secret, I've got one, too. Yeah? That's funny. I never thought I'd like a girl as sassy. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd like a... Sorehead? A man with very definite opinions. Mm. About women, especially. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jean. I still got to thank you for pulling Jimmy through. Oh, well, that wasn't me. It was a plasma solution. Uh, you that gave it. A Messerschmitt on a tail. All part of a routine evacuation flight, Lou. The sort of thing you're through with. What do you mean, I'm through with? You're being transferred, aren't you? Transferred? Where'd you get that idea? Well, I thought you were getting out of this lousy service. Sick of being a sky nursemaid. Well, a guy can change his mind, can't he? Well, to make it stick, you've got to have a change of heart, too. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. A change of heart, Jean. That's what makes me feel so good. Flight number 19. Flight number 19 taking off in 15 minutes. Crew report to Hangar 7 immediately. Crew to Hangar 7 immediately. Come on, miss. That's us. Yes, Sergeant. That's us. That's us. Thank you, Maureen O'Sullivan. Later, we will hear Miss O'Sullivan interview Sergeant Thomas Day, Jr., who was wounded in North Africa and who has good reason to be thankful for the flying ambulances of the United States Army. Before we hear from them, we want to tell you more about a chemical refrigerant at work in the war. Fresh air, fathoms deep, and fresh, cool air. The fact that our Navy's new submarines have fresh, cool air even after long submersion strikes old-time submarine men as almost a miracle. But in this war, Uncle Sam's submarines are air-conditioned. Even when they dive deep under fathoms of ocean, air conditioning keeps the air clean and fresh. The men can even smoke, something that raises the eyebrows and also the hair of pioneer submen who had to be supremely careful that nothing should foul their scanty, precious air supply. And even if a modern submarine comes to the surface in the blistering heat of a tropical noonday in the South Pacific, even if the deck plates under the sunshine grow hot enough to fry eggs, air conditioning keeps the inside below decks cool and comfortable. The refrigerant used for air conditioning and food refrigeration in a submarine must be absolutely safe. It must be non-poisonous. It must have no odor. It must not support flame. It must not explode or decompose if it comes in contact with the electric stoves in the galley. It must not interfere with the chemicals that purify the air. That's why the Navy submarines use Freon-12 refrigerant. And as if keeping the air fresh many fathoms down weren't enough, the newest submarine air conditioning equipment does something more. It's of the reverse cycle type. Not only does it cool the air when the subs are cruising in tropical waters, but it warms it when they're operating in the Arctic. Freon-12 is manufactured by Kinetic Chemicals Incorporated, a subsidiary of the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. There are several types of Freon fluorine refrigerants for different kinds of refrigerating machinery. They are manufactured chemically from carbon in the form of charcoal, sulfur, chlorine from common salt, oxygen from the air, water, and a mineral called fluorspar. We have them because chemists developed new syntheses that had never been used before. 
Thanks to Freon 12, the same dependable, safe chemical compound that safeguards the food in your own refrigerator, the gallant men aboard our Navy submarines breathe fresh, cool air. A humanitarian wartime use of one of the DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And now, our star of tonight's cavalcade, Maureen O'Sullivan. It's been a privilege to present on Cavalcade this drama of the air evacuation transport service. The extent of this service may be judged from the fact that of 9,500 wounded in North Africa, 7,000 were flown from battle zones to hospitals, with less than 2% of casualties fatal. But here is a soldier who has had first-hand knowledge of this new humanitarian service, Staff Sergeant Thomas Day, Jr., of Ardsley, New York. What do you think of the air transport service, Sergeant Day? Pretty swell, Miss O'Sullivan. If it wasn't for their plane service, I probably wouldn't be here today. Well, will you tell us about it, just as you told me this afternoon? I got mine at mature, but just about dusk the eve of Good Friday, April 22nd. And the Americans were driving the final push that eventually drove the Germans out of Africa. Our trucks were just starting to move. The one I was riding in ran over a landmine, 11 pounds of TNT. The truck was blown to pieces, my left leg with it. I was able to crawl clear of the burning truck, take myself for Talbot's, and sprinkle itself a powder on the wound. I never lost consciousness. Five minutes later, a doctor picked me up in an ambulance, made a tourniquet out of his own belt, and got me to first aid. I had three plasma transfusions before I was evacuated to ran by plane. The same base was the scene of our part of tonight's cavalcade. I'm afraid I've never made it in an ambulance. or ran was heaven. You'll never know just how good it was to be there and to be back in America a little over a month later. The Army Evacuation Service is really tough. Take it from one who knows. Thank you, Sergeant Day. Good luck. Next week, in honor of Independence Day, the Cavalcade of America will present a great radio classic, Listen to the People, by the late Stephen Vincent Benet, with an epilogue by Carl Sandburg. Our star will be Ethel Barrymore. Be with us next week when Cavalcade presents Ethel Barrymore in Stephen Vincent Benet's Listen to the People. Here is a message from the government of interest to everyone who is wondering how he can pay his 20% withholding tax and increase his war bond purchases. The new withholding tax doesn't change the actual amount you pay. It merely changes the way and the time you pay. A sensible way of paying for the war as we go along. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Donald Vorey. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> <laughs>